morning. Today we shall start design of doubly reinforced beam, design of doubly reinforced beam and we shall consider the flexor part, part 1 and we shall have followed one few examples that we shall consider it as part 2. Design of doubly reinforced beam. So, doubly reinforced that means reinforcement in the tension side as well as in the compression side. Steel reinforcement in both the tension and compression zones are called doubly reinforced beams. If we have a section which we are familiar in last few days, we are providing reinforcement, we are providing reinforcement in the tension zone only. If we consider in a normal general case, the bottom portion as tension and the top portion we are providing which is nothing but in the compression zone. We are providing steel in the tension zone as well as in the compression zone. What we can do, what we can do, but why do we need it? Why do we need this reinforcement? Why we have to provide that? We need that reinforcement because your depth is not adequate. You could not provide the depth required if you have to design it as per singly reinforced section. In that case, because it is restricted, maybe due to ar architectural point of view or maybe some other reason. So, we have to provide then what we can do, we provide compression zone, we provide steel in the compression zone and we do the design and that is called doubly reinforced beam. It may happen that say due to moving load, particularly in support, where you have that compression as well as tension, there is a change of sign in the um, bending moment. There also you have to provide the reinforcement in the tension zone as well as in the compression zone. So, what is the design philosophy for doubly reinforced section? The design philosophy of doubly reinforced section, we shall provide the reinforcement in both sides. Let us say this one ASC, area of steel in the compression side and AST, area of steel in the tension side. We can make in two parts. We can say that we are having a portion this beam can take it a singly reinforced one that means moment of resistance if we consider it as a singly reinforced section only in the tension side. Therefore, I can say 
this portion that area of steel let us say AST 1, area of steel AST 1 due to singly reinforced section plus the remaining portion I can provide it assuming that only the steel action AC area of steel in the compression side and AST 2 area of steel in the tension side. So, area of steel in the tension side we have two parts AST equal to AST 1 considering singly reinforced section we are assuming we are considering here we are taking it here as a balanced section due to balanced section whatever steel we require that is AST 1 plus AST 2 individually this portion also will be in equilibrium as well as this one also will be in equilibrium. AC and AST 2 should not be equal, it cannot be equal because the strain in the top portion and strain in the bottom or in other way the stress, stresses are different in two sides, stresses here and stresses in the bottom are different that is why that area of the force whatever force we shall get it the force is equal because that one is supposed to be in equilibrium, but not necessarily that AC and ST2 will not be equal because stresses are different in two different zone. I could further explain we have if we draw the strain diagram, the strain diagram it says somewhere say neutral axis. If we consider say uh, FE 415, we are assuming the steel is FE 415. So, point 0 0.0035 that is in the compression zone the st strain, whereas here point 0 0.0038 since we are considering FE 415. We are providing the steel at this zone in the compression side, so the strain is different. And since strain is different, since strain is different, oh, I could further explain this one that uh, yeah, W and for section point zero zero three five epsilon SU. I have told epsilon SU, which is nothing but epsilon SU, which is nothing but I can say. So, point zero zero three five point zero zero three five for a fee four one five. What we can do our strain diagram point zero zero three five concrete always same, but the other side it is dependent on the your reinforcement steel reinforcement you have used and we shall use this stress block, the stress block you are using this one. What we can do now? Uh, we are using this curve, it is dependent on the strain up to point 0 0 0.002 we shall come back up to point 0 0 0.002 strain beyond that we get constant stress in concrete which comes as 0.45 epsi k which will come as 0.45 epsi k. This portion less than 0 0.002 strain we shall get that in a parabolic one we can get the corresponding stress because we have to find out the stress. 
The other important part that is the major part in our case because since 0 0.0038 for AP 415 and we are getting say 0 0.87 FOI, 0 0.87 FOI why? Because we are using that partial safety factor for materials that is divided by 1.15 for steel. So, we are getting 1 by 1.15 which is nothing but 0.87 FOI, we should always remember 0.87 FOI. And the corresponding strain, the corresponding strain, the corresponding strain we shall get it from this curve for the strain computed we shall get the corresponding stress and that we shall use it to calculate our force. Okay. Now, let us come back. Let us come back in few cases when we have to provide the reinforcement. Let us write down when the construction depth is restricted. and the moment the beam has to carry is greater than the moment capacity of the beam in concrete failure. When the construction depth is restricted and the moment the beam has to carry is greater than the moment capacity of the beam in concrete failure. So, moment of resistance for a section provided if we have this section let us say capital D due to some reason we cannot go beyond this D 450 millimeter 500 millimeter like that, but moment computed applied that is more than the moment of resistance of this section. In that case we have to provide the compression that your reinforcement. The other one we can take let us say number 2 where the bending moment at the section can change in sign. We can say uh, that a continuous beam possibly and there is a moving load the vehicle is moving over the bridge if, if it is continuous. Most of the cases our bridges are simply supported, but if the bridge is continuous in that case in the support the bending moment can change its sign and in that case because in the top say generally it is compression and bottom tension, but due to change in sign. So, it can happen the other way the bottom compression top tension. 
So, we can get that we have to provide that adequate reinforcement and in that case we have to provide that W reinforce, you have to use it as a W reinforced section. Well, let us come, there are different uh, other points also. Now, let us come that your analysis. of W reinforced section. Analysis of W reinforced section. Uh, we shall come back for different other cases also, but before that let us take basic considerations. Number one RC sections in bending RC sections in bending fail when the compression. strain in the concrete reaches the value point zero zero three five. We shall assume few cases. 0 0.005 that is the strain in concrete and here also it is valid in W reinforced section also. Number 2, plain section remain plain even after bending. We can take uh, one more consideration. Number three, the stress at any point in steel and concrete. can be taken as equal to the stress corresponding <coughs> to the strain at that point of the stress strain curve i repeat the stress at any point in steel and concrete can be taken as equal to the stress corresponding to the strain at that point of the stress strain curve for the material. So, we shall get stress and strain at a particular 
600 level, we shall get the strain. Strain is same for concrete and steel that is same, but the corresponding stress we shall get it from the corresponding stress strain graph. From the concrete we shall get that parabolic and straight portion and for steel the corresponding graph which is given in IS456 from there we shall take the your comp the stress. Now come to few procedures. What we have to do? We have a section, then we have a neutral axis, the effective depth D. Width B stress strain curve. Let us draw point zero zero three five. What about this portion? <laughs> Let us say this is effective depth D dash d dash equal to clear cover plus phi by 2. Our interest here, this is epsilon s. Our interest here, we can divide it into two parts. One that I have already told, one that singly reinforced section plus you supplement with steel in the compression side and as well as in the tension side. We shall get the curve we have let us say this is T. C, C due to concrete only, compressive force due to concrete only and we have C, S. Therefore, C total force in concrete equals C C plus C S. C C we can get say due to concrete failure I can write down this way C C equal to K times F C K B D square please check your the previous class note K 0.138 F C K B D square if it is F E 415 we can write down and the C S it is nothing but the stress in steel multiplied by the area of steel in that zone. And we have two lever arms, one lever arm this is one let us say Z C and the other lever arm let us say Z S, Z C and Z S. D is the uh, effective depth. Uh, that is only between the two reinforcements. No, D is never within uh, between the two reinforcements. D is always from the top fiber. 
d is always from the top fiber and that is why we have got another parameter say k 2 d. It means that from the top fiber what is the position of this resultant force compressive force which is 0 0.42 d or 0 0.416 or 0 0.42 d that we are getting. So, we can write down m u equal to c c concrete times I can write down here say z c the lever arm plus c s times it is always d minus d dash it is always d minus d dash. So, I can I think I can write down instead of that let us write down here plus c s d minus d dash I mean to say j dash equal to d minus d dash okay. and this c c is nothing but k f c k b d square depending on the steel used depending on the steel used we shall get. We have to find out the strain. The section we are providing here point zero zero three five. We have to find out epsilon SC in the st strain in the compression side at the steel level where we are providing the steel that is at a distance d dash from the top fiber d dash from the top and we have x what about epsilon sc epsilon sc will be equal to 0 0.0035 1 minus d dash by x epsilon sc 0 0.0035 1 minus d dash by x if we assume if x maximum could be say d by 2. So, we can write down d dash by 0.5 d If we can have, let us draw the stress strain curve or I think I can show it here. Our objective here, the strain where we are providing the steel reinforcement, the d dash, if it is more than 0 0.002, the strain greater than 0 0.002 what we can get we can always get 0.45 epsik we can get 0.45 epsik we are assuming if x max equal to d by 2 0.48 d x u by d x u by d for fe 415 that we get 0.48 okay we can get it in is 456 we can also derive it also x u by d equal to 0 0.48. That means, it is coming say reasonable assumption that 0 0.5 x u equal to 0 0.5 d maximum. So, we can write down this expression where it comes as d dash by 0 0.5 d 
equal to say 0 0.0015 by 0 0.0035. Therefore, I can write down d dash by d equal to 0 0.214 approximately say 0 0.2. We can say d dash by d if it is 0 0.2 or less than that we shall get the strain stress in concrete 0.45 FCK. We shall get stress that is 0.45 FCK. The other portion because we are getting the strain, we are getting the strain at that level. So, corresponding stress we shall get it from this curve. So, the corresponding stress we shall get it from this curve. Instead of that, let us tabulate it. Let us find out in this curve that for the strain how much stress we shall get for a particular strain how much stress we shall get it from this curve. So, stress level in terms of yield, we shall start with 0 0.8 into 0 0.87 FOI, 0 0.85 into 0 0.87 FOI, 0 0.9 0.95, we shall linearly interpolate because if we get the corresponding strain, so we can linearly interpolate. We shall take these few points in our case. Let us take F E four and five strain and stress. We shall get at this stress level point eight into point eight seven FOI zero point zero zero one four four the strain corresponding stress two hundred eighty eight. Let us give the unit point zero zero one six three three hundred six at point nine point zero zero one nine two three hundred twenty four point zero zero two four one 342.0026.351.0038.361. And we are getting from this curve. You can directly you can get it using scale directly also you can get the corresponding stress, but instead of that uh, it is customary that we can tabulate it and from there we can just linearly we can interpolate. If the corresponding strain comes within this limit, 
so we can linearly interpolate and we can find out the corresponding stress. So it is better to use this type of table. What about Fe 500? The strain, let us give a margin, strain and the stress, we get 0 0.00174347, 0 0.00195369. Point zero zero two two six three hundred ninety one point zero zero two seven seven four one three point zero zero three one two four hundred twenty three point zero zero four one seven four hundred thirty four we have for Fe 415 and also for Fe 500. We can get the strain and corresponding stress and we shall linearly interpolate to get the corresponding stress at a particular strain level. We shall come to the next level say analysis of beam. One, let us elaborate the whole procedure, calculate mu for concrete failure. As a singly reinforced beam. We can write down this part as mu1 equal to 0 0.149 fck bd square for fe250 equal to 0 0.138 fck bd square for fe 415 equal to 0 0.133 FCKBD square for FE 500. We shall use the appropriate formula to get the moment of resistance for singly reinforced section when the section is assumed to be failed due to concrete, concrete failure. Mu1 for Fe250, for Fe415, for 500. Step 2, determine the balance steel required. We shall use the formula that 0.87 FYAST, the steel also has reached the maximum stress equal to 0.36 FCK B times XU. We can write down it as AST by BD equals 0.36 by 
just rearranging times f c k by f y times x u by d. Let us repeat f e 2 5 0 f e 4 1 5 f e 500 x u by d 0 0.53 0 0.48 0 0.46 p t what is p t in other way a s t a s t equal to p t times b d by 100. So, P t equal to 21.97 F c k by F y equal to 19.82 F c k by F y equal to 18.87 F c k by F y. If we calculate, we shall get this. Either you can remember this one or we can start from the very first principle. You can calculate our objective here to find out because it is easier to remember, which is nothing but the steel force equal to compressive force. From there, you are getting that value and we can find out A s t equal to P t B d by 100. Therefore, we can write down P t. What I feel? Uh, most of the cases at the time of design, when you are doing in design office or at your home, your books, other things are available. But when you are doing in the exam, so you should at least follow certain procedure so that you can do it without consulting any book. So that is why it is better to start from the first principle, though it will take time. But if you do practice, if you solve so many problems, then you will find out automatically you can remember these values also. Number 3, determine stress in compression C s equal to F A C, F A C is the steel that in the con concrete, uh, in the con compression side F A C minus F C C times A C. What we mean? When you are taking this section, there are reinforcement. When you are considering the singly done for section already we have taken this area. However, small it is the compressive say your concrete stress, but already we have taken this area that is why we are deducting that A S C. When you are taking the steel, so we are taking F S C minus F C C times A S C. However, we can neglect this F C C because it is very, very small. So, because you are taking say 20 Newton, 20 times say 0.45. So, that means 9. If we find out 0.45 FCK, if we take 20 Newton per square meter m 20 grade of concrete, we are getting 0.45 times 20, which comes as 9. Whereas, 0.87 FOI, say for FE415, which comes as say almost say 361. So, in other case, we can neglect this uh, 9, and our code also that in annex G you will find out that it neglects. And we can write down C s equal to nothing but F s c times 
A is C. Okay. So, this is your that compressive force due to that steel in the compression side. Number 4, we have two parts of moment of resistance, one is M u 1, another one M u 2. Find M u 2, we can say additional moment, let us say. in comp compression failure due to compression steel. M u 2 equal to, let me draw the figure. This, this length is d minus d dash A A C. So, M u 2 equal to F S C, which we have got it from the strain times A C the force times the lever arm, which is always d minus d dash M u 2 F S C A C d minus d dash let us write down A C area of area of compression steel and F S C stress in compression steel. corresponding to its strain. So, we have two parts M u 1 and other part is M u 2. Number 5, find total M u for concrete failure. We can say, we can designate it as M u c equal to M u 1 plus A f a c a a c times d minus d dash. Number 6, find A S T 2 by tension failure. <coughs> we are analyzing the beam that where A S T is given. So, I can write down as a S T 2 will be equal to A S T minus A S T 1. A S T 1 because we are having two parts area of steel A S T is the total tension reinforcement in the tension side due to singlet reinforced section the corresponding balanced steel we shall get it that is say A S T 1 and remaining portion A S T minus A S T 1 which is A S T is T 2 that we shall get it to provide that your in equilibrium position for the compression reinforcement and that one we call it as a steel beam theory. So, we are having two parts that means we are providing as if that we are providing steel at the top we are providing steel at the bottom and then we are increasing the moment of resistance of the beam. Number 7. Uh, 
find total MU for tension failure. considering final failure to be due to stencil steel <coughs> reaching yield. We are taking this case, uh, we have already done in the concrete side, concrete failure. Now, we are talking the other side, the tension failure. Here, we are assuming that we shall reach the yield stress of steel that is 0.87 Fy. Then what we can write down? Mut, we have already done Muc. So, Mut will be equal to Mu1 plus A S T 2, A S T 2 is the remaining portion times 0.87 F Y D minus D dash. This M U 1 plus A S T 2 times 0.87 F Y D minus D dash. We are taking the same principle. A S T, A S T equal to A S T 1 plus A S T 2 and the D are different, so D minus D dash. So, we know M U C and we know M U T, out of them which one is the minimum one? that one will be your moment of resistance of that W reinforced section. And this is called analysis of W reinforced section. The section where all the detailing is given that your depth, width, reinforcement at the top, that means the compression side in general case, reinforcement at the bottom, I mean to say in the tension side, tension zone, concrete grade, steel grade and we have to find out the moment of resistance. So, if we summarize we shall get, we are, uh, we are making it in two parts. First part as if that we do not have the compressive reinforcement. So, if we take out the compressive reinforcement, we can consider it as a balanced section. So, what is the moment of resistance due to concrete failure that we can find out, which is nothing but M u equal to capital K F C K B D square K in a particular case for Fe415 that is 0.138. So, M u equal to 0.138 Fck V d square that just can remember. The corresponding area of steel A S T 1 we can get it from the balance section because steel also simultaneously reaching the yield stress. So, A S T 1 we can find out. The total area of steel A S T is provided minus A S T 1 that one we are getting that it will be in consideration with say W reinforced section. So, A S C at the top in the compression side and corresponding A S T 2 the balance of A S T minus A S T 1. From there we shall find out the corresponding moment of resistance. So, we shall we are doing in one side we are doing it due to concrete failure, the other side we are doing it due to steel when it is reaching the yield stress. We shall find out the two moment of resistance and we shall which one is the lowest obviously we have to take that. So, M u <coughs> moment of resistance equal to minimum of say I can say M u c and A m u t. This is called analysis we shall continue with that design, design of W reinforced beam. When moment that MU is given, that applied moment is given, 
and width of the beam given, depth also given, say, we have to find out the reinforcement other thing that is called design. Okay? So, let us stop in this one. So, we shall continue again in the next class today itself.